We'll be, we got the Iceman out here, man. <laughs> the hundred fifty million dollar guarantee, man, boy. TennisGM.com, CPGM Heavy, CPGM News, CPGM Juice. Find us on Twitter. Uh, subscribe, like, comment on the YouTube channel. Um, and visit the website, man. It's ConcentratedGM.com. We're breaking down all these teams. We're going to give it to you video. We're going to give it to you written. We're going to give it to you however you want it, man. Conversation, however you like it, man. We got, we got you. you on all platforms. But we're going to talk about the Atlanta Falcons. This is my team. 28-3. Yeah, Come on, man. twenty-eight to three. Come on, we never gonna live that down, man. That wasn't necessary, man. We talk about the draft, and you talk about twenty-eight to three. Yeah, man. This guy's a Bucks fan, man. So you know <laughs> the animosity is there. You know, but um, I was rooting for him, by the way, just so you know. Pick number twenty-six, Calvin Ridley. Mm. I'm looking at the draft. This is how I was, I was looking at it. I wanted Isaiah Wynn right there. The Falcons' biggest need were probably right guard, D tackle. Um, I didn't want Taven Bryan. A lot of people had his mock there because mm-hmm. we had the Gator connection, Dan Quinn and those guys. Just but too many Gators for your, for your too, too many Gators. I only can handle, handle Gators in small doses. <laughs> you know, I, I didn't want Bryan, so I'm looking at Isaiah Wynn. Uh, Isaiah Wynn got picked at number 23 to the Patriots. Mm-hmm. And then after I'm looking at the, the draft board, I'm like, Calvin Ridley came in my head, man. I was going to text y'all boys. I was like, yo, I think we might be targeted to Calvin Ridley here, man. Pick 26 came. Kevin Ridley to pair up with a Julio, Muhammad Sanu. They have Devontae Freeman, Tevin Co- Weapons. Weapons. Yeah. Weapons. Pick Everyone. your poison. Pick, Pick your poison. poison, man. And what you think, man? What you guys think about Kevin Ridley, man? He going to eat? I, I got to eat. Is, he's going to have to eat, man. Taylor Gabriel obviously is, is, is out the door there. So, you know, they fill the hole with Kevin Ridley, a better player, all-around player, yeah. who's eventually, you know, probably maybe is he going to – Nah, he ain't. nah. How old is he? Twenty three, about to be twenty four. Okay. The old one. Um, uh, maybe, maybe he replaces Sanu at some point, or maybe I'll just run with those three. We'll make a prediction. Oh, here go the prediction. Mm-hmm. Calvin Ridley leads Atlanta in touchdown receptions. Oh, 2018. Yeah. yeah, that's easy. I like that prediction. You know why? Because Julio don't they don't yeah, they, they don't, don't throw it to him. No, he can't. Get open <laughs> they don't. You know what? <laughs> it, it ain't even about him being that bull or them not throwing him the football. He can't get open in the rest. So, of so fantasy guys. So you say Calvin Ridley is. Uh, a good draft pick. I think, I think he's a receiver three. Mm-hmm. I think he's gonna be a receiver three. I, I think I love Sanu. I love I love the versatility that he brings inside, outside. I mean, how you can have Sanu throw a pass. You know what I'm saying? I, I love Sanu, but Calvin Ridley and I know a lot of people were, are down on Ridley, obviously because he didn't have Sparky. the sparkiest number. But I, I want to put this on record. I I if you look at his numbers and you, and you look at his size and age and and even where he's from, he compares very favorably to Chad Johnson. Ocho. Compares very favorably, and and Drew, Drew, as much as I love Gallup, Drew, Drew believes Gallup is the best route runner in this draft. I think Ridley is the best route runner in this draft. Uh, I, 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 I agree I, with you. I, Gallup is my guy. He's my receiver one, but but Ridley is incredibly polished, and we can talk about his age, this, that, and the other, and and break out this, whatever. Just watch the film. When you watch the film, and people talk, oh well, he didn't have that production. Look, look at Julio Jones' numbers when he was in Alabama. Same Alabama plays with leads. He got better numbers. Yeah. He, he plays with least when, when they had Jake Coker, who isn't great by any stretch of the imagination, but was a better quarterback than Hurts. Um, he he had better numbers his freshman year. You know what I'm saying? That was his best season statistically. So, yeah. it, Alabama's playing with Leeds. They're putting teams away. They're running the football. It's Nick Saban. It, it, you're not going to get those huge numbers. I, I think I think really he's good to go. I think I think he has. He clearly going to have success out of the slot. A lot of people are pitching and holding him there. I think he can play outside the numbers because of his ability to create separation with his route running. And, and yeah. definitely, they can move Muhammad Sanu in the slot, make a big slot. They, they, they got Legos out there, man. Yeah. They got pieces. They can move yeah. all these players all over the field. It's going to be a dangerous offense in Atlanta, man. Right. I love the pick. And, you know, it's, it's, we always talk about this, man. Best player available versus need. need. And, and if they don't intersect or aren't close. Yeah, you know, it's, it's always player. better to go best player available, yeah. man. We've seen teams always draft need and, and skip over reach. Yeah. All this, man. We've yeah. seen uh, the. the, the uh, no, I'm right. saying. All right, go. We'll leave them. That, that, that draft malpractice. We'll talk about those. <laughs> um, you know, when you talk about really, you know, the. the when you talk about his combine numbers, and, and the one thing I heard was is essentially. Most, if not all, I'm not gonna say all. I'm never, I'm never gonna say all, but most of the players that we know from Alabama struggled at the combine, and it's it it, it, it I don't know who said it. I don't know if it was a podcast already. 
you saw yeah, it too. Yeah, yeah. It has something to do with the training that they do at Alabama where they, when it comes to tests, they're not as explosive. But I don't care about all this. Just watch Cause, the film. Because the eye in the sky don't lie and it you can get open at the end it of the day. It doesn't. And, and for, those, for those that, that, that are still screaming combine numbers, you killed Dalvin Cook last year, yeah. and he should—he probably was going to end up being the best running back, or at least rookie of the year. Or it was tough. It was tough, but he, you know, with Kareem Hunt and Alvin Kamara, but he was definitely. No, on you don't pace. think he would have took it? You don't think he would have stayed? I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, in terms of who you think is the most talented, though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Dalvin Cook was my RB one, yeah. but in terms of rookie of the year, I, I, Kamara was maybe it was close. We, we, we will never know we'll never because know. Dalvin Cook got injured. But yeah, man, and um. You want to get on to the rest of these picks, man? Yeah, yeah, My yeah. least favorite pick in the draft for the Atlanta Falcons. Number two. Isaiah Oliver, number two. Yeah. Uh, Falcons fan, I get it. You know, I get it. Dan Quinn, you, you, you like a certain type of corner. Mm -hmm. You know, you tried it with Jalen Collins uh, a couple years ago. Uh, he played well sparingly in that in that Super Bowl run, but, you know, he... he what he put it? What did he do again? I don't remember. He PED'd himself out of the league. There you go. He, he's not in the league anymore. <laughs> he syringed himself out of the league. <laughs> he syringed himself out of the league. <laughs> and that, now you have Isaiah Oliver. He has the size. He has the length that Dan Quinn wants. You know, they're going to run that cover three. And we're going to ask him to play on the uh, on the boundaries, man. What you guys think about Isaiah Oliver? Uh, my, 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 here's my issue with him is ball skills. Yeah. Like the moment of truth. And, you know, I was online. You know, I like to look at things. I like to read things. The little the reading read, that bro? I do, a little, the little reading that oh, I do, okay. uh, football anyway, um, is, you know, I, I got a conversation with some folks about Oliver, and they, they submitted to me, go here and look at this film. So I looked at the film, and every pass that I saw was a terrible pass. It was a lofted up pass. It was one of those floaters that you got time to... Allowing the clothes. Yes, and... yes. There was one play where he made an exceptional play because you could see his... His his yeah, I mean, his, his length. Yeah, he just yeah, kind of reached over, over and got the football. Yeah, that was yeah, fantastic, but, exceptional. But, but that that play, the ball hung too. Yeah. No, it, 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 was, it was the least hung of I the balls you, I that got, got, got I hung see up. What you're saying. I see what you know saying. what I'm saying? Yeah. So you know that's not happening in the league. Tom Brady's not hanging the ball up. It's coming in fast and hard. And like I said on the podcast, if I'm a quarterback, you know I'm trying Oliver. He's that guy. I'm 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 highlighting. I'm looking at on film and saying we're going after this guy because he doesn't react to the football in time unless it's locked it up. Yeah, you know. I would say this though, he he, he landed in a, in a favorable position. Oh, great skill set. He, he he can sit and learn too. He don't got to come in right away, does he? No, he doesn't. See, so I, I'm on the fence on Oliver. Um, the the tape that I watched, I'm not overly impressed by it. I, I think to your point, the system and his physical tools. Assuming he gets the requisite coaching, he takes the coaching, and, 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 and he, he continues to develop. But I asked you guys when we, were, when we were discussing the cornerbacks, where does he kind of fall in the pantheon of all these uh, Colorado cornerbacks that have come out recently, whether it be Chidobe, whether it be uh, Witherspoon. Um, where, where, do you, where do you find this guy? I, He's closer to Witherspoon because of the, the, the size. Sure. I don't know, but I know I like Witherspoon coming out more than Isaiah Oliver. Yeah. 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 I, I, again, the, 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 he gets a lot of credit for, you know, raking through, the, you know, the, the, the completion of the catch, making plays on the back end. I, I think at the NFL level, guys, strong hands, those are completions. Yeah. Those, are, those are completions. You, you're not, you're not going to be a better athlete than everybody you line up across from anymore. Yeah. And you're certainly not. You're certainly going to face guys with a lot more uh, technical savvy. So I, I think it's going to be baptism. I think, I think he's going to get, I, to your point, they're going to try him. Now, whether or not he, because I think he's going to struggle a little bit. I, th I think he's going to struggle. Whether or not he's able to, to, to rally and overcome that is a different story. I don't know. Yeah. But I think he's going to struggle. Yeah. There's another quarterback that was taken very early in this draft that I think is going to struggle too. Mm -hmm. But okay. we'll, we'll, we'll get to there. It was a tease, man. And I'll finish off with, with the uh, thing about Oliver is, like I said, it reminds me a lot of the Jalen Collins pick in the second round. And I thought Jalen Collins sucked. I didn't think he was good at all, but he played well for us. So sure. maybe Oliver could, could also play well within that system. Um, third round pick. Uh, this was a big need for us. Uh, Deidre Sanat, USF. Mm. We're, we're USF alums. Yes, we are. Bulls. USF oh, Bulls. Bulls. Go Bulls. Uh, throughout the sign. Yeah. That's, how, yeah, you I think that's how we do it. I don't know. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I love this guy, man. I yeah. love him. Exactly, because what we needed, man. Sure. We need a guy next to Grady Jarrett that's going to plug up the run mm -hmm. game. Uh, he has underrated uh, skills to get to the passer also, and 
He fits his defense perfectly on it. Poe po went, right? He went to what, Carolina? DeAndre Poe went to our rivals, Carolina Panthers, so we had to replace that guy. So, you know, I think we was looking at, uh, was it B.J. Hall? Uh, PJ, yeah, 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 yeah. B.J. Yeah, Hall yeah, from yeah. Sam Houston State. Yeah. We were looking at him in the second round, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Oakland drafted him a, a pick before us, but I, I would have rather picked Sonata in the third, third round, round than get Hall in the second sure. round. So, man, and then the fourth, fifth, fourth, sixth, and the sixth round picks, um, these are, these are special team guys, man. Edo Smith, I think he got picked a little early. I think we kind of reached for Edo Smith, but he's a do-it-all running back. He's a Coleman replacement. He's a, he's a talented That's Coleman, a Coleman replacement. replacement. Wow. I don't think he's that talented. I, I no, do like, no, I do no, like no, his game, though. No, he isn't, but, not but, but you're not going to pay Coleman. It's, it's, it's not, not going to happen because they got they to pay, pay Jake Matthews. They got to pay Jake Matthews, and Freeman already getting the money. Yeah, not paying Jordan. We'll see, you know, and then Russell Gage, I'm very – very interested in this player, man. I think this player, they, they compared him to uh, Slater, from uh, Matthew Slater from the, the, the Patriots. They said this guy might be the best special teams player in the entire draft. And then when you're in the sixth round, that's the kind of guys you need, man. Sure. The Gunners, you know, the guys that's going to, you know, play special teams for you. What's going to make a difference? Going to make a big difference, Down man. Down inside the one or or if somebody happens to Reggie Fish it, muff the punch, look that up, Reggie Fish. Uh, Who went to Reggie Fish? Yeah, <laughs> U.S. game, championship game, SEC championship game. Um, you know, those guys will be there to, to, to um, scoop it up. You know, it's important, man. Yeah, so, I, you know, I think the Falcons do well in this draft. Um, Calvin Ridley is definitely the splash play, and I think everybody else is a fits in need, and it's going to have a very – Special role on our football you, team. You were a little coy about the whole Calvin Ridley thing. I I, I do recall we, we kind of had a discussion after the pick was made that you kind of felt that's where they were going. But you 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 were bullish on Calvin Ridley as your number one receiver Chicago. over DJ Moore over Gallup. Yeah. Um, you thought he was a top ten talent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. You would have been fine if 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 San Francisco may have taken him at nine or, yeah. or something along, or even the Bears. They they would have went in that particular direction. So um, I think. I think Falcons fans should be very excited. Don't buy into the nonsense about well he didn't this and the Sparky and this that and the other. No, you got a hell of a receiver and 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 Sanat in particular. I, I thought on, on day two that was I think that was probably your best day two pick. He he plays an immediate impact in terms of your your defensive line rotation. So I, I like what the Falcons have done. I really do. Definitely, man. There you have it, man. You got anything, Drew? Nah, man. I mean, I'm a Bucks fan, so I don't really care about the Falcons and everything. Fair enough. Um, just CouchPotatoGM.com. Couch Potato General Manager is the YouTube channel. We like to discuss. We like to, we like. We want you to comment. We want to talk back to you. We want to... I, I, I'm going to call you out if you're wrong. You're going to call me out if I'm wrong. That's fine. We can talk about you. You can debate it, man. So, so the cows come home for the season starts, man. That's what we're about here, man.